I'm going to be honest, folks, I overestimated my ability to test and film every single one of the games you see in these two stacks. So, this retro hunting adventure is a two-parter. Starting this week with part one, we'll get to the Game Boy games, the Wii games, the PS2 games, the PlayStation 1 game, and the Sega CD game. I'll save the GameCube games for part two. Yo! This is Mega Ran. And you need to rock and or roll on over to Mr. Mega Man Fan's YouTube channel. Because it's all that rush to make it happen. <laughs> Peace! It seemed the easiest to start with the Game Boy game since I had a Game Boy Advance handy. And it's funny, but even though these old Game Boy Advances aren't backlit, when I've got the camera on it with the light on the camera turned on, it actually feels like it's a fully lit up screen. It's pretty easy to see other than the glare from the scratched up lens. I suppose I could replace this plastic piece, but I've never gotten around to that. Maybe if I was going to go to that length, I would just go ahead and replace the screen with an IPS screen anyway. So this is The Page Master, which is a pretty infamous movie, I believe. It was the second big project for Macaulay Culkin after Home Alone, and uh, kind of a flop, as I recall. Don't think the game did very well either, but I just wanted to test it and make sure it works, and I'll do a deeper dive into it later. The one that really interested me was F-14 Simulator Turn and Burn. So I was happy to see this, too, was a tested and working Game Boy game. Cartridges tend to be... Pretty good survivors, even if they're 20, 30, 40 years old. Most of the time, if they haven't been abused, they're going to work. You might need to clean the contacts a little bit to get them going, but with these two, they were obviously well enough cared for that the contacts didn't even need cleaning. They were good to go the first time I put them in. They didn't glitch out. The Nintendo logo didn't flake out. Everything seemed to be in order here. Although... I immediately hit a brick wall with uh, F-14 because it says thrust to 99% and no matter what button or what combination of buttons or what directions on the D-pad, I can't seem to get it to thrust. I don't know what I'm doing wrong here. I will have to look up a fact online or some sort of scanned in instruction manual that came with the game back in the old days when it was complete in box because... I just can't get any thrust. So we moved on to PlayStation and PlayStation 2 games. And this overly dramatic cinematic intro is, believe it or not, for Centipede. I didn't know that Centipede had a story like that. Every hundred years, the same thing happens. Well, that's good to know, but... I don't really care about that, Joe Bob Briggs. I just want to play some arcade. And thankfully, this doesn't have to be done in the story mode. You can actually just play an arcade game of Centipede, which is what you see me doing here. I think there may be a little bit of lag. I'm not blaming the game. I think it's probably the batteries in my wireless PS2 controller. I think if I had an actual controller plugged in, I'd be doing a little bit better. But as wireless controllers go, when I do Centipede on the ColecoVision through the Analog Mega SG's Coleco core, I don't have these kind of problems. That's a wireless controller too. And uh, actually probably a little more risky since it's a uh, lithium charged battery as opposed to straight up alkaline batteries. But it just seems to be quicker, more responsive. That could just be the design of the game as well. Maybe the ColecoVision Centipede is a little more, even though it's less arcade accurate, maybe it's just a little more playable because of the simplicity of it. Centipede's never needed to be fully arcade rendered to be a good game anyway. As long as you've got the worms coming down the screen, the spiders coming across the screen, and your gun to shoot all the mushrooms and all the bugs, that's all you need. Speaking of shooting things, this is Cabela's Deer Hunting, which uh, 
I don't particularly care for deer hunting, so I didn't actually hunt any deer as I tested this game. I just tried out this uh, bullet time physics engine that the game has on PlayStation 2 where it follows the trajectory of your bullet as you shoot it in the air. I wanted to see just how long and just how far the camera would travel with it, so I deliberately shot at the mountains to see if it would follow it all the way. And eventually the camera just gives up and says, Nope, Chief, we don't have enough memory or rendering power to follow a bullet that far, so forget about it. Then we move on to Spyro, Enter the Dragonfly, which seems to be the least favorite Spyro game most people think of when they think of this franchise. I don't remember that Kadikaris had very good things to say about it when he did his overview of Spyro games. I know he's more of a Crash Bandicoot guy, but... He has gone over the Spyro games before, and I don't think this one rated very well with him, but I think there might be some rose-colored nostalgia going on with that, because to me, this feels just like anything from the original Spyro games on the PlayStation, or the reignited remake of them that came out just a few years ago on all modern consoles. It's obviously a little more polygonal than the remakes, and... Obviously, a little less polygonal than the original PlayStation versions. So, I kind of feel like it's actually a comfortable balance right in the middle. And it's a collect-a-thon like pretty much any good Spyro game is. Maybe with a few more interruptions to explain how to play and what you're supposed to do. But, I don't mind it. And here we have Crash Tag Team Racing on the original Xbox. This was actually much harder to find than I ever thought it would be. And I'm going to partly blame Kadikaris for that because I think more people have tried to collect all of the different Crash Bandicoot games thanks to him. I used to see Crash games in retro gaming stores all the time before I ever actually decided to try to get a full set of them. And then ever since then, it's like, well, those videos have done millions of views and kind of reunited everybody's love of Crash, and I'm sure the Crash Insane Trilogy and Crash 4 It's About Time have also made people yearn for those old Crash games. Even the bad ones, like the handheld ones that he just recently reviewed, but I finally managed to find a copy of Crash Tag Team Racing at Pop Culture, and it was the original version and not the platinum hits version which was a nice bonus on top of that i would have settled for either one but it was nice to get the original one and not the second print run and as you can see here it works just fine i actually think it's a more playable version of crash tag team racing than some of the other platform versions here we have okami for nintendo wii which i was all raring and set to go to play but then it said connect the nunchuck and sorry chief i can't be bothered to do that when i'm just testing games i'm not going to connect a nunchuck just for that purpose so we're going to move on to where the wild things are and uh, unfortunately this one has another problem i'm out of memory on my nintendo wii so i can't create a save file and i can't do anything so i'm going to quit this one as well we're going to move on to Cliffhanger for Sega CD, a Sylvester Stallone movie that I'm going to freely admit I've never seen. The only thing I know about it is the parody of it they did on The Critic, where a bunch of different people were hanging from his legs, like a woman was hanging from his legs, and then a child was hanging from her legs, and then a cat and a mouse were hanging from each of their legs, all in a big line as they were hanging from the edge of a cliff. But what surprised me when I put this game in the Sega CD and started playing it is, like, it's just Double Dragon. I mean, basically, it's a left-to-right belt-action brawler with a mechanic that makes a cutscene play every now and then. But basically, aside from the fact that your protagonist looks like a 16-bit rendition of Stallone, loosely speaking, is basically a Double Dragon game. Not that that's a bad thing. In fact, actually, I think this might be kind of fun, but I guess I was thinking with Sega CD it was probably going to be more of a quick-time event game 
or some sort of full-on cinematic game, and it's actually neither of those things. I'm Mr. Mega Man Fan. This is the Retro Hunting Adventures. See you next week.